Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to my Clash of Champions predictions. As per usual, I will be running through the card giving my predictions for who I think will win each match. If you guys want to get involved, please leave your predictions in the comments below to this video. And if you get more predictions correct than me, you will have a chance to make me suffer a little bit. What you will be able to do is request that I watch a terrible match. Something like Undertaker vs Giant Gonzalez from Wrestlemania 9. And I will watch that and film my reactions and release that up on the channel as well. So please take part yourselves. So let's get started. And we're going to start with the match that is probably going to be on the pre-show. The Cruiserweight Triple Threat. Drew Gulak defending against Umberto Carrillo and Lince Dorado. As you guys probably are well aware, I don't really watch 205 Live. Um, I guess we're probably going to see a Drew Gulak retention here. I don't really see any reason to swap the Cruiserweight belt apart from on kind of big shows. Maybe they'll do it at Survivor Series as that's the next big one, but... For now, I'm saying Drew Gulak retention. We could potentially see a second match on the pre-show, and if we do, it will probably be the women's tag team title match. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defending against Fire and Desire, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Not really a lot to this. Alexa and Nikki have only really just picked up the belts from the Iconics and are trying to get them involved on weekly TV a little bit more. So I think shifting them over to Mandy and Sonya is probably not going to be the best idea at this juncture. So I'm going to stick with Alexa and Nikki for this match too. Starting now with the kind of main bulk of matches. And I will be doing these in a very specific order just so that I don't forget one of the belts because obviously there's a lot going on. Um, but before we begin in earnest with this section, uh, there have been rumours that the 24-7 championship will be kind of defended in some shape or fashion on the show. I'm sure it will probably just feed throughout the entire show, but my prediction is essentially that come the end of the night, R-Truth will still be the 24-7 champion. So there's a little bonus extra prediction there. In terms of the only non-title match on the card, we have Roman Reigns taking on Eric Rowan in a no-disqualification match. Now, my initial thought before I realised this was a no disqualification match is that Daniel Bryan would somehow get involved and the whole thing would end in some kind of like big schmoz, therefore sort of protecting Rowan in him not having to eat a loss. But obviously, as this is no disqualification, that's not really going to hold up. So I think that Roman Reigns is going to win. But I do think that Daniel Bryan will still get involved in some way and it could potentially be him that actually costs Rowan the match. Kind of in getting some payback for what happened the week before when Rowan slammed Daniel Bryan through the announce table. Right, let's start off with the tag team belts. First of all, on the Raw side we have Seth and Braun. Defending against Rudolph, Robert Rude and Dolph Ziggler. What a pointless match. It really is just going to be there to kind of further some conflict between Seth and Braun. And I guess the most interesting thing will be for them to drop those belts to create as much tension as possible going into their match with each other later on in the night. So I'm going for a win for Rude and Ziggler here. On the SmackDown side of things, we have the New Day defending against the Revival. Both teams conspicuous by their absence on SmackDown this week. Technically speaking, I know we've still got the wildcard rule enforced, but the Revival are meant to be a Raw team, so having them win the belts just makes no sense. And New Day have only just won them, and I think they need to stay on New Day to try and kind of re-legitimise the SmackDown tag team division. 
so we will be having a new day retention here right the next couple of belts the mid card belts we have AJ Styles defending the US title against Cedric Alexander this was although it's been building for a couple of weeks bit by bit the match was kind of really thrown together at the last minute I can't see AJ dropping the belt to Cedric just yet. I'm sure this is just an opportunity for Cedric to have some kind of showpiece match with someone as established and as high profile as AJ to really get him over in defeat. And of course AJ has got the OC for backup if needs be. So this one has to be an AJ Styles retention here. And over on the SmackDown side of things, Shinsuke Nakamura is defending the Intercontinental title against The Miz. And he will be having Sami Zayn in his corner. Now there is talk of a draft very soon and The Miz does seem more suited to SmackDown as opposed to Raw. They're also building up the fact that he could equal the record for most IC title wins. And I believe I'm right in saying that that record is currently held by Chris Jericho. And it wouldn't surprise me if they kind of want to get one over on Jericho and surpass that record. Especially given what's been going on this year with AEW. But I don't think that now is the time that that is going to happen. I think Sami Zayn will interfere. Miz will pick up the win but it will be through disqualification or some such manner and Shinsuke will manage to escape with the belt but technically Miz will win the match which is what my prediction is here. This will then lead on to a rematch at Hell in a Cell and I think the Miz will probably pick up the belt there and then move over to Smackdown in the draft. Right. Women's titles time. Again, first on the Raw side of things, Becky is facing off against Sasha in Sasha's first pay-per-view match since her return and obviously her heel turn and attacks against Becky. And I think here we are going to see a title change. Sasha needs to really be established as a dominant threat within the women's division and I really feel like the wheels are starting to fall off on the Becky Lynch push and have certainly already fallen off with the title run. I think removing the belt from her and trying to get her to sort of start chasing the belt again is a lot more interesting and again we have the Sasha Bailey element are they going to help in each other's matches who knows speaking of Bailey she is defending the Smackdown title against Charlotte and I think especially given the fact that Sasha and Bailey for some reason lost their tag team match on Raw against Becky and Charlotte both of them need to win here to really establish themselves as a dominant pair they might even be able to reclaim the tag team belts and basically hold all the belts within the women's division also I think a win here does a lot more for Bailey than it does for Charlotte so Bailey to retain here and finally we have our main world titles First off, Seth defending the Universal title against Braun Strowman. This obviously being after they have defended their tag team belts earlier in the night. Or at least you would presume it would be earlier in the night. I can't see them taking the belt off of Seth Rollins already after he's only just got it back off of Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar only really took it off of him because of the whole money in the bank thing. Probably would have been better for Seth if he'd have held on to the belt in one continuous stretch since WrestleMania. But what can you do? There are also rumours here that the potential match against The Fiend at Hell in a Cell will actually be for the title. Although I don't believe it has been officially announced as for the title. It's just been that he is going to face either Seth or Braun. So he could technically face the loser of that match. But if it is going to be for the universal title i think putting the belt on braun and then immediately taking it off of him or at least you would assume that the fiend is going to win that as he is still so hot right now having him lose would be really stupid so putting the belt on braun and then taking it straight off of him again isn't going to do braun any favors i think it would kind of be better for all around for seth to retain the belt 
And then that leaves us with Kofi Kingston defending the WWE title against Randy Orton. And I think it is time for Kofi to finally drop the WWE title. Obviously, SmackDown is going to Fox very, very soon. And Randy Orton is much more of a name within wrestling than Kofi Kingston is. He is a much more established main eventer. He is a name that people that were watching that may have kind of lapsed from the product are probably going to recognise more than Kofi Kingston. So I think having him as the champion going into the Fox deal would make a lot more sense. Also, if The Fiend does win the Universal title and we go down the route at Survivor Series of Raw vs Smackdown and title holders vs title holders, Fiend vs Randy Orton can play off quite a lot of not too distant past. What with Randy's brief time in the Wyatt family and their match at WrestleMania 33. So there we go, they are my predictions for Clash of Champions. Please let me know your predictions in the comments below and if you do manage to beat me I will be asking you to suggest a terrible match for me to watch so that you can make me suffer a little bit more. I will make sure I put that video up before that British guy ends at the end of this month. As I keep saying, there is plenty of content still coming up this month, so please stay tuned, stay subscribed, and until next time, I have been that British guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.